my name is Andrew Rapp. Uh, I am a senior at CU Boulder, uh, and I love making things. I love crafting. Um, I'm currently in the process of making a truck camper for my, uh, my Tacoma. I work a lot on motorcycles, uh, mostly retro ones and a little bit of newer ones, and I just like making stuff. Oh, also, I uh, a tattoo, so I'm a little bit of an artist here or there. So I was working at a Young Life camp on the coast of Oregon, uh, and I'd just gotten another tattoo. Like, the day that I landed in Oregon, I got in a little earlier than everybody else would, so I could go take an Uber into Portland, get a tattoo, and then come back, and then go to the camp with everyone. And uh, I was showing one of the guys that I was with the new tattoo that I got, and I just had a few at that time. Uh, and he was like, dude, you should totally get a tattoo machine on Amazon. I was like, what could go wrong? It's a great idea. And so I got this little kit that just had two different machines in it, you know, your classic traditional coil machine, shader liner. And uh, I just, you know, started learning, watching videos. Um, and so one of the big things is Matticide. It's this awesome chemical that's used universally in tattoo shops. Uh, Pre-sterilized EOS gas, dated stamp, checking every single seal, uh, wearing gloves, washing your hands with antibacterial soap every single time I take my gloves off and touch something else that's not. So yeah, there's a good process that goes into preparing the space and, you know, making it comfortable for the person I'm tattooing and also making it so that it's safe. And then uh, he was like, dude, you should tattoo me. And so my first tattoo is this little bicycle that was super sloppy and just like, man, not not good. But he had like the confidence in me, like, dude, just tattoo me, it'll be fine. And that confidence like helped me to realize like my, putting a needle in the first person, you know, like, oh, I can do this. And you know, from there it's just gotten better over the course of like, I don't know, maybe like, around 500 tattoos now. I, I don't say them kept count, but it's been a lot over three years, so. One of my favorites was uh, Stitch. I did this Stitch on uh, one of our friend's legs. It says Hi-Fi on top of it. It's a good one, I'll let you figure out what that means. Uh, a lot of times, if you have lots of tattoos and somebody asks you how many tattoos you have, it's kind of just like, eh. You know, I've got like a sleeve I'm working on so, you know, like, you could have 20 tattoos that are all the size of, like, that sleeve, you know? And so it's kind of like, uh, I feel like if it, like, sessions, probably like, I don't know, I don't even, 20 sessions maybe from a professional artist. And then, you know, like four or five tattoos I've done on myself. Uh, and then the rest of the days of the week, I'm working on my campers. Uh, I only have two days where I actually have class. Uh, and so Monday, Wednesday, it's getting up at nine. I go to a wood shop where I am working on a lot of wood furnishings and stuff like that. And then in the afternoons on Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, I work in a metal shop. And so I just practice welding and just general woodworking or metalworking, forging, stuff like that. Um, but then just in general with wood, I'm making the whole camper. Um, and the whole shell is going to be built out of wood, insulated, like framing for a house. Uh, and so that's like a pretty big project that I've been working on. Uh, in just hopefully a couple months, I hope to be working for a, a van build company. And then, you know, a couple years down the road, two to three years, I have to own my own company, Rex Customs, coming to you. I'm using that as the name for my build for my truck right now, so to continue to promote it and just kind of build up a user base right now while I'm already doing something. Um, but then hopefully Rex Customs can take off as its own custom camper for uh, trucks, vans, teardrop trailers. Just continue to like woodwork, metalwork, work on cars and motorcycles. It's been harder in the past for me to balance like my passions with my responsibilities because I just like to do those things more than I like to be responsible and write a paper on time. Um, but I kind of realized it's like writing a paper sucks and so I've cut that out of my schedule as much as I can. So now like my passions are, are working into my responsibilities. Um, and then the rest of my responsibilities are like hanging out with people, family, you know, like living that nomadic lifestyle is appealing and fun right now because I'm tied down by school and like that. Um, but I feel like having more structure would be honestly better in the long run. It's dope kind of having a lot of things that I like to do and a lot of things that I'm passionate about because I know that wherever I go, I'll be able to do something that I'm passionate about. And so I'm not worried about getting a job. I'm not, you know, nervous 
about whatever that looks like because I'm just excited to go learn new things and just continue trade and I'm okay with working hard for my whole life just because I'm going to continue doing something I'm passionate about. But just like in general, you know, like some days you'll have days where you're a little down or, uh, you know, things just don't seem like they're working out or like you're worried about stuff like money, which is like one of the things that I'm like worried about a lot because I like have these big goals and plans and things that I want to do. Building my truck, working on motorcycles, buying new motorcycles, you know, just like little things. And then I was like, oh, I'm in college and I like don't have a job right now. Can't really afford that. Jesus like ties me down a lot and uh, brings me back to like who I'm, I am and who I'm made to be. You know, kind of shows me throughout whatever. There's like more to look forward to. I don't have to have these things, you know, so it's like easier to have like him to trust in. And then that way, if like people let you down or stuff doesn't go right, it's fine. You know, you know you got something better. I can confidently put stuff together that's strong and that looks good, but there's like so much more I could do. Uh, even though I'm like good enough to do like good tattoos and be confident in them, I can do like a word or you know like a little bit more complex shading but like the level that is just up here for even some of the tattoos I have of doing like photorealism of like a bear, like I just, I don't know. Find somebody else who knows how to do it better than you and ask them for help because that helps in so many ways not just like having somebody teach you but having the tools to get into it like Half, not even half, like most of the things that you can do as a hobby require like such a big startup, especially with like think, talking about money and whatnot, to make the things that are good cost a lot. So having the opportunity to go to somebody who has that shop built up already and then being able to learn from them just gives you the opportunity to use good tools that you're not going to get hurt on um, or, you know, just like good experience. Like I have asked every person that's tattooed me if they can kind of talk a little bit about what they're doing because they've been doing it for longer and they can give me little tips if they're willing, some people aren't willing. It's a trade secret. Um, and then just go for it. I mean, there's no harm in trying it and failing and then continuing. Most of the people in this world that are good at something have failed half the time to get good at, at what they're doing. What is your ink to body fat ratio? Ink to body fat? Uh, 20% <laughs> ink? <laughs> I'm more ink than I am blood at this point.